interview with Cuba's chief negotiator came up at a U.S. Senate hearing on Capitol Hill. The country's top diplomat for Latin America says the U.S. will not stop supporting democracy and human rights activists as part of any agreements to restore diplomatic relations. The senator has also heard from a number of Cuban activists. Joining me now to talk more about this, the relationship between Cuba and the U.S., is William Leo Grand, Bill, a Latin American political analyst. Bill, thanks for being on the program. My pleasure. Uh, let's talk about the congressional critics and testimony in the Senate today. They accused President Obama of failing to get enough concessions from Cuba to protect dissidents, to speak out against human rights. Do you believe, Bill, the administration gave too much without getting these assurances? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, the real negotiation was around the release of the prisoners. Um, the one. Cuban intelligence asset that we wanted back. Alan Gross. At, well, Alan Gross plus the, the Cuban uh, who had been spying for right. us. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cubans wanted their three spies back. And we also got 53 political prisoners released. The other things are really things the president announced unilaterally. He informed the Cubans that he was going to do these things. But things like the telecommunications and travel and so on, these are things aimed at opening up Cuban society and were done in the interest of the United States, not as a, not as a favor to Cuba. How soon do you foresee a U.S. embassy in Havana, a Cuban embassy, not an intersection in Washington? And can the Republican-led Congress block funding for a U.S. embassy? Well, they could, <clears throat> they could block funding for an embassy, although they would probably have to wait till the next appropriations round, which doesn't come until fall because we have a continuing resolution for the government that goes until the fall. They can block, of course, the confirmation of any ambassador that the president might appoint in the Senate. And some of the most vocal critics of this policy are, are Senators Rubio and Senator Menendez, both on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I think it may take a while to get an embassy. We've heard in the last few days some of the issues that are at stake come up, the issue of the terrorism list, the issue of travel for U.S. diplomats and what they do when they're on that travel. Uh, Cuba also said not too long ago that uh, staying on the terrorism list would be incompatible with normal diplomatic relations. So there's a way to go yet before we get to being able to raise the American flag over that building. And before I get to the pictures that were released today, I want to ask you about Guantanamo. How big of an issue do you think that's going to be? Uh, Cuban leader Raul Castro said he would not normalize relations until the trade embargo was lifted and the U.S. gives up its naval base at Guantanamo Bay. But I don't think he's referring to diplomatic relations. I think he's referring to a normal relationship overall. Uh, the Cubans have always said they want Guantanamo back, but it's always been relatively low on their list of priorities. The embargo is at the top of the list, of course, and, and they'll keep pushing for that. But right now, the relationship around Guantanamo is actually a relatively cooperative one between the U.S. military on base and the Cuban military locally. Okay, so let's talk about those pictures. Uh, when I yeah. first saw them this morning, I thought Fidel Castro looked very engaged. I mean, granted, he looked older, more fragile, but he seemed, it certainly seemed like the rumors we've been hearing about his frail health. Sure, he's older. He is in his 80s. Your thoughts on the photos and how he looks? Well, there's no question that they put out these photos to kill the rumors that he had died. Mm -hmm. uh, people were, were speculating, of course, because he hadn't met with the Cuban five spies who came back, and people expected that photo op. He hadn't said anything for a long time about the normalization of relations. Biggest story in 50 years. Um, I think he is physically frail. The last couple of times he's appeared in public over a year ago, he needed help to be able to get along. So I think that's probably why he hasn't made a public appearance and we haven't seen much of him. But this was clearly designed to let everybody know he's still alive and still has a view of things. Why is it so important to prove to the world Fidel Castro is still alive and he's OK and is you know, um, sitting down with this young man, taking pictures, having a conversation? Why is that so important? Well, because the whole world is paying attention. He's, he's the founder of the Cuban Revolution. He led the revolutionary government for almost half a century. He's a legend. He's a legend, and most Cubans uh, you know, were born after the revolution now and haven't known any other leader other than him and his brother Raul. Uh, and so there's a lot of interest, not only around the world, but in Cuba itself as to you know, how he's doing health-wise. Fascinating conversation. Bill Leogrand, thank you so much, sir, for your time.